Ooh, hey guys, where have y'all been? It's been like two weeks. <laughs> oh wait, it was me, I'm sorry. <laughs> I've been gone for two weeks. I started a new job and it's 12 hour swing shifts, uh, which is great. And it's uh, a lot more opportunity for my family and for myself and for this channel to grow. But, um, you know, it does take a lot out of you as far as getting used to all that and orientations and training weeks and just a lot to it so I've been kind of out of the motion but I'm getting back in it today guys there is so much that has happened um, in the past two or three weeks since I've done a video um, it's been ridiculous okay so I'm gonna show you some of this uh, chicken garden bed that I'm looking at um, this is the first part of it okay this is the asparagus the perennial asparagus bed and this is year one so i've just kind of let it grow like crazy and i haven't harvested from it or done much to it i haven't tilled it haven't done anything this is just how this entire bed started off it was just a uh, newspaper that we laid down and then we put wood chips on it and that was it and uh and then i planted asparagus into that and uh, you can see it's a little crazy and uh not much going on, but I think next year it'll really pick up as those roots get established. And I think we'll have a wonderful asparagus bed. But you can kind of see how it's just wood chips. And it's kind of big. There's some grass clippings in there, but see how big those are? It's just, this is kind of what this entire bed was. Well, throughout this season, as I would have some extra potting soil or whatever, I would throw it down over here. Voila. I put just whatever I had extra in there. And I've let it decompose. I've watered it. I had stuff growing in here, if you remember. Well, what I've done now is I've taken all of it out. Uh, and we were getting ready to plant in here for the fall and winter. But the soil is starting to look a whole lot better. Man. I don't know if you can tell, but the wood chips are starting to get smaller in size. It's starting to look more like uh, good old soil and less like wood chips. So I think over the next year... As we do this fall guard and then on into spring, it's just going to keep getting better and better. And I'm going to keep amending it. I'm going to keep adding compost. I'm going to keep adding whatever I need to, but it's going to just get better and better uh, with time. And it's very exciting to see it's something that you start off with that looks like that to become this. And then in the future, who knows what it'll be. So I went to, uh, I think it was Tractor Supply, and I bought a pH test kit. And it's a cute little test. Comes with uh, capsules of powder that are used for the test. And what you do is you put a little bit of dirt in the bottom of the test and one capsule of the powder. And then you add a little bit of water and you shake it and let it settle. And whatever color the water is, you compare that to a chart and it lets you know what the acidity of your soil is. Um, if you're going to do garden beds, that's the first thing you have to establish is what is your pH of your soil. Uh, because you can have a ton of nitrogen and phosphorus and potash and all that stuff all up in your soil But if the pH is too acidic or too basic then nothing's gonna grow and I didn't understand that until I got into doing some stuff this spring Had some successes had some failures and I realized that that's a big part of it. So I got the pH test and um, went through it and um, it came out to be 7.0 which is right in the middle. It's just a nice neutral. Now, a lot of plants um, in gardening, like in vegetable and fruit growing, need slightly acidic. So they need like 6.5. So um, <clears throat> what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to add, before I plant into this bed, I'm going to add some uh, manure, hopefully horse manure if I can find it, uh, composted horse manure. I'm also going to put a couple of handfuls of sand in there to help with drainage and to develop the soil. And I'm also going to put a few uh, handfuls of ashes, like wood ash. I'm actually burning a wood pile. You can see it right there smoking. Um, I'm actually going to put uh, several handfuls of that ash up in here uh, to help with some of the fertility. I may throw like a handful of Epsom salt out here. You know, just a little here and there. Not anything that would completely just change the makeup of the soil, but just little amendments over time. Crushed up eggshells are great things like that, that I can just mix in here before we start the winter garden to help give us some fertility uh, as well as help uh, get that pH perfect. So that's some exciting things that I've been working on uh, this week. Another fun addition, uh, if you remember through some of my videos, I've had some predator, predator problems with uh, my chickens. And that rooster hiding behind that uh, feed can there is the last 
of our um, Royal King chicks that we grew this spring. And I've had a lot of problems with predators and I've done a lot of changes to my setup and um, to my methods of how I clip their wings and trying some different things. Um, but I had a friend of mine, a friend of my dad's, a friend of ours, that had these little bitty bantam chickens. These are, um, I think they're like uh, some kind of red, Rhode Island red cross. But they're a bantam style bird, which means they're small. If you look and see how tiny those little birds are, they look like pullets, but they're actually laying eggs. They're full grown hens. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? And there's one rooster there, that little pale rooster with the black and white tail feather right there. Anyway, but that's the new birds. We've got five layers and one rooster of that variety. And um, they are great. We clipped all their wings when we first got them in here. We're going to check their wings every so often so they don't fly out um, for predators. But they seem like they're just the coolest little birds and they're tiny. So they lay tiny eggs, which is fun. We'll have to start making, um, you know, three eggs instead of two for our breakfasts or whatnot. But, um, but they're just wonderful little birds, and they don't seem to want to fly out or get loose. Like, they're just happy and content with just walking around and scratching up my compost pile I keep there. I keep raking it up, and I let them kind of go through it and eat out of it and kind of till it up for me and turn it for me. And I've been spraying it with water. Um, and then I'll add that to the garden. But they're just great little birds, and um, just really like them. Another benefit is the rooster, when he crows, it is, it's like a tiny little crow. Like, you can barely even hear it from our bedroom. So, they're a lot better. Um, the other roosters that we've had have been loud, and, you know, five or six in the morning, you know, I'd be up for work and about to head out for work or whatnot, and they'd be, you know, going and going. And I'm like, man, you know, it's kind of annoying. But these little birds are so cool. And uh, just in every little way. And I'm excited to watch them more. And as you guys watch the channel, just, um, you know, let, let's see how they do. Uh, so far, I love them. So let me know what you guys think. If y'all have ever had little bantams like that, just uh, put a comment down below and let me know uh, how they worked for you. Another cool improvement that I made. If you guys remember, my chicken waterer was an old dog water, like a gravity-fed dog waterer. And what I had was, it was hard to keep clean. And um, <laughs> I actually had some frogs getting up in there and laying tadpoles. I know it's kind of weird, but uh, that kind of stuff just is not good for the chickens. It can lead to some diseases and some other things like that. So I want to keep their water supply nice and fresh um, and clean. But another thing is that was like a one gallon or two gallon waterer. And I had to refill it every three or four days. <clears throat> And it was hard to fill. You had to unscrew it and flip it upside down and reattach it and flip it up. And it was just a big deal. So I picked this one up from Tractor Supply. And it is a five-gallon waterer. And I probably have to refill this thing once a week, if even that. Uh, it's very good. It also fills from the top, as you can see, the little screw top there. It uh, You just kind of unscrew it and all that. And it is just a great little water. And when I come through every day and I do my chores, what I do is I tilt it on its side and all the water that's in that um, tray spills out and then fresh water comes out. So they're constantly getting fresh water. allows me to clean it every day. Uh, and then I'll probably have to clean it maybe once a month or so uh, to keep it nice and fresh for the chickens. But it is just a great investment. If you guys um, are looking to upgrade your waterer, uh, you know, get one of these big ones. It's just a, it's just a good deal. It'll have you doing less work, and it'll be a lot better for the chickens. Another thing I want to note on this is um, I have bought before metal uh, feeders and waterers, and actually you can see, you know, <laughs> it's a metal feed can. But I just don't like metal anymore. Uh, I wish I hadn't have bought that feed bin. They rust and corrode and get holes in them and it's just a bad deal so I would go for plastic plastic can get scratched and it can it can bust and it can get in the Sun and kind of fade or whatnot but overall I think um, you know for what it's worth I think plastic is just the way to go on this kind of stuff easy to clean easy to sanitize and um, it has lasted a long time uh, this feeder that I've got over here that's my next thing that I'm going to try to upgrade but it's been there for I mean, I got it from Dad, and he had used it for a year or two, maybe, and then 
I've been using it for two going on. This has been my third year of using that one, and it's been great. So I uh, put some fresh shavings in there for them, uh, and I've, I'm working on some other upgrades on the nesting boxes. You can see that string that's running from that eye bolt up into the house. I've got it a hole screwed through the right there. I've got a counterweight on that, and I'm working on a system to where I can um, open the door, like lift up the door here, and then it'll stay open, and I can reach in and get the eggs, and then I can shut it. Uh, what gave me this idea was, I, used, I like to do a lot of my farming with Rosalind, and she's still a baby, so I have to carry her. And I was trying to think of a solution where I could one-handedly get the uh, eggs out, and that was something cool that I thought of um, for a counterbalance system. So uh, I'll probably do a video on that once I get all the kinks worked out and get it officially working. So y'all look for that. Some other cool things that I want to mention is um, the Cinderella pumpkins. Um, <laughs> their vines grew like 15 or 20 feet. Really good growth. Um, we harvested three really good ones. And there was probably two or three more that would have grown. But I decided to go ahead and kind of reset this patch. And I'm going to work on tilling it today. Um, where they were. And I'll show you what's left of it. It's basically just a grassy spot here in front of this tree. One thing I did learn about pumpkins is, you know, the seed packets say full sun. Um, and, and I've experimented this spring with some things that say full sun. I've tried to do them in shade just to see what would happen. And of course, obviously it stunts their growth. You know, they don't grow as good because they do need all that sunlight. But another thing with pumpkins that I found out is that the pumpkins were getting some like sliminess to them like almost like a fungus was starting to grow or like you know a bacteria or something like that. and and my theory is what I'm coming up with is not I'm not a scientist or whatever I'm just a little farmer guy in the middle of the country but I think that the full sun helps keep them drier kind of helps the foliage so that things like blossom and rot or um, oh somebody's shooting a gun golly pow 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 anyway sorry <laughs> it's in the country here all kind of weird stuff like that but I think the sun kind of helps keep them dry and kind of cuts down on funguses and bacterias and kind of helps them grow better. So in the future, I won't put pumpkins here, but instead I'll put shade-loving things here like broccolis, cauliflowers, cabbages. I'm going to make this a nice little square bed that we can use for other things. Um, and go ahead and develop the soil a little bit because I think it's got some good, uh, some good future to it, I think. So Cinderella pumpkins did really good, very excited. And hopefully we'll get to use those. I've got them curing inside in a nice, cool, dark room. And we're going to use those for fall decoration. So that's pretty fun. But they do really good and i um, very excited about growing them. Okay, the grapes. Uh, the grapes that we put in, uh, Dad helped me build this uh, little trellis uh, thing here. <laughs> and it's been really neat. Um, we did a transplant from Dad's house. So it was already a root and it was kind of grown. It put on leaves. And let me show you. It did some of this kind of stuff where it didn't look as healthy. Some bugs got at it, you know, things like that. Um, wow, you can actually see them, look at that. Wow, I gotta get after that. Anyway, but basically my thing with the grapes was that I didn't uh, babysit them. I just stuck it in the ground, uh, kept it watered, and I just let it grow. And I knew that this year I wouldn't get much growth off of it, but that next year it would come back and it would maybe double. And then it would go from there and we could get a well-established uh, grape supply. But today I was out here with Rosalind and I picked one of these darker grapes. And I tell you what, it was so sweet. I was like, wow. So I'm going to try to get in here today and probably clip these off and go ahead and, you know, take all the fruit off. And uh, see what I can savage and go inside and maybe make a small bit of uh, grape juice. Maybe a gallon of grape juice. Um, it was really fun to make. So I may do that from our first year. But other than that, we're just going to let this grape grow. Let it continue to happen. In the winter, we'll look at pruning it back and study how to do all that. And then hopefully next year, we'll get double or triple that amount of grapes. And we can go from there. But all around good flavor. Very excited about that. Just took up all the tomatoes. Uh, took out some of the peppers that were done. Got a few peppers left on this plant, so I'm going to let them go. Uh, my wife wanted to keep the marigolds because they did look very pretty. And they did do very well. Uh, and they're very beneficial for whatever we plant in here. So we're going to let them go until they winter kill, uh, basically. Uh, of course, the zucchinis and all everything else I had here has been long gone. 
what we have left is some watermelons. These are sugar baby watermelons. And um, I'm going to try to stick a clip in of me eating one <laughs> yesterday, but they're really good. And what's what's cool about these is that they're super small. They're like personal size watermelons. Like this one's probably ready to pick, and I need to look at the the tendrils and see if it's dying off, which it looks like it looks like it's almost ready. Um, my wife flipped it over because it had a sun like a spot where there it sits on the ground and doesn't have sunlight. So she flipped it so that it would get nice coloration. So you can see it's already starting to get greener right here and heal. But this one will actually be ready to go. Um, probably pick it in a day or two and eat it. But um, man, I love these little sugar babies. They're sweet. Um, probably the best watermelons I've had all year. But they're small. But that's okay though. If you've got a, uh, you know, just a family. Like I've got a family of five. Well, you know, Christy ate a quarter of one and I ate half of one. So, you know, two, two or three watermelons can feed us. And we've got a couple more growing, so. So yeah, I got the watermelons finishing up. Just great, great little watermelon. Very excited. Only bad thing is they do have a lot of seeds in them. Gosh, uh, that's the only bad thing. But I guess that's with any watermelon. But uh, overall, very pleased. Sunflowers. We harvested the sunflower seeds. We took them out. We um, uh, I let them soak in salt water overnight. And then we drained them and put them in a dehydrator. And we dehydrated them. Uh, once we dehydrated them and they were nice and dry, I took them and uh, put them in the oven, covered them with a little salt, a little butter, and just roasted them. Uh, I think it was 300 degrees for about an hour. And um, beautiful little seeds. I mean, we were, we're still eating on them, wait on some for lunch today, but very cool. Uh, but this is just kind of some of the stalks I need to get out before we plant. And uh, very thick stalks. Hey, if you've never grown sunflowers, I mean, this is firm. This is really hard. I can't even hardly break it. I mean, this is super thick uh, how they grow. And whenever I first busted it, when the sunflower was on there and I was talking, I broke it, water just gushed out of this thing. Um, so they have a very powerful root system and a very good stalk system too. So very impressed with the sunflowers. But, um, but they are gone. They're over there decomposing in a little pile there. Uh, the other thing I have in this bed is a French melon. You can see a little baby one right in there. There's some bigger ones, but these guys probably won't be ready for another two to three weeks. I picked one that was about this size here today just to see what was going on with it. And it is green on the inside. Uh, beautiful flesh, um, just like a cantaloupe. Uh, at this stage, they smell and taste like a very good sweet cucumber. They have the cucumber smell and a cucumber uh, taste. But as they ripen, if they get, they'll get bigger and they'll get more ripe. And um, what we'll have is uh, a sweetness. Their 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 flesh will turn a uh, deep red orange, and they'll get super super sweet. And they're supposed to be uh, really fragrant. They're a French melon, and uh, very excited to see what these uh, turn out to be. Our fig tree is getting huge. Uh, I pruned it back um, a lot in the late winter like january february and uh i think i really pruned it back almost too much because it has spent its entire spring and into summer you know we're coming up on the end of summer just putting on new growth and i haven't seen any figs yet there's probably some little guys budding out and stuff but haven't seen any figs so this is probably one that'll uh, hopefully put out in maybe september or october maybe we'll get one last little fruiting and we can eat off of it but if not i'm just going to prune it back just a little bit i'm just going to kind of shape it more or less and um you know prune out any limbs that are kind of touching each other and whatnot but i'm going to try to do more of a healthier prune this time and i'm also going to till up the soil down here and add some compost to it and see what amendments i need to do to help the fig tree oh there's one little guy i just spotted one hold on See that little guy? Oh, that's awesome. Okay, well, he'll be ready in a couple weeks, but very exciting. I love figs. I just, I had this, this was here when we bought the property, so I didn't choose to put a fig here, but I thought, wow, this is so cool. Let's let it go. So, pretty exciting. 
Well, guys, thank you for joining me. I appreciate you coming along on this uh, garden tour. I was going to show you what we've had going on and why I haven't done a video here lately. Um, leave me a comment below in the comment section down there and tell me how can I make these videos better because I'm shopping for some cameras, kind of got my eyes on some tripods and some software of how to do better videos, um, as well as looking into some different music and different editing details, different intros. I'm really looking to develop this channel and make it something that you guys enjoy and that you can learn from. So uh, if there's any subjects that you want to hear about or learn about, uh, let me know. If there's anything you want to hear about, uh, if you want more family in the videos, let me know. If you want more um, stories or whatever, uh, more comedy, more hacks, whatever it is, just let me know what you guys want to see on this channel because we've got 54 subscribers. 53, 54, something like that. And uh, I want to get to 100 by the end of the year, which I think would be super cool. And with this fall gardening, I think we can really do it. But I want to make sure I improve it because I don't want to put videos out there that are, that are stupid or crappy. I want to make sure I put out good stuff that um, makes your lives better. So please uh, let me know that below. And make sure that you like and subscribe and uh, share this with your friends.